the automaton begins to learn at a geometric rate. It becomes self-aware in the year 2021, August 21st, 2100 UTC. Yes, I've got the AI largely working for World War I Flying Circus. And uh, so it's been uh, quite a interesting past two weeks. Um, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm a student at Full Sail University. I'm going for my mobile gaming master's, working on my capstone project, World War I Flying Circus, building a AI uh, automaton that I hope will eventually uh, kick the tush of most humans. And let me tell you that uh, this is a, a three major sprints or three major uh, big things that I need to do to get this to work inside of World War I Flying Circus. The first, and I've already demonstrated this, was for every relative position of the biplanes in the in the plane, in the geometric plane, uh, whether it's you know, the angle off of the bow, the angle of the other biplane relative to this biplane, and then the distance between them, uh, plus some other information, uh, that five tuple, every time a human makes a move, I want to save that information into an online database so I can mine that uh, rich resource. Uh, because in World War I and Flying Circus, it's like playing chess in the air, but with one difference, both players are moving at the same time. So in order to have a better chance of being deterministic and being able to carry a heuristic in which I can be, you know, calculate what is the best move for, the, uh, for the, um, the automaton, the AI, I need to know what kind of moves the humans do in these relative positions. And if I can identify a maneuver that is more popular than other ones, then they'll be, and then figure out how to get behind and get a shot in on that human for that maneuver, then I'm gonna give the automaton a, a fighting chance in this kind of environment. So that's the first one, I already demonstrated that. The second big sprint is to read in that five tuple. So all the different raw information about all the different five tuples that all the different humans have made. And, and uh, for every, uh, we've got the gameplay for, uh, for network play. Uh, every time a human makes a move in a network play, I am writing out, so for each turn, I'm writing out two different, um, the five tuples, and then the, the maneuver that the other human made, given that situation. For pass and play, I also will send to the, uh, to the online database uh, the, the each human's move, uh, so it's two per turn. For the AI play, I am saving uh, the human's moves against the AI machine. Uh, I haven't discounted it yet, so I'm still saving that information, but I'm only, only saving the five tuples for when the human moves. I'm not saving the five tuples for the AI moves. Um, but anyway, uh, reading in all that raw information and then going through some uh, good old fashioned heavy duty mathematics in order to uh, calculate uh, for that most popular human move in that uh, relative five tuple position. What is the best move maneuver for the computer AI to swoop in behind and get that shot or um, do other things to kind of thwart the human from getting a shot on it. So anyway, that mathematics can always be improved, but I've got a really good uh, first pass at that. And then uh, the third step in these three sprints is now that I've pre-calculated all these, you know, given all the relative uh, five tuples positions, um, and I've pre-calculated what is the best move for the AI um, automaton for that relative positions, basically read that in and use them in the game. Um, and of course I had to create a, uh, a fourth um, play mode for that. I've got the network play, I've got the pass and play, I've got the bloom busting. Now I've got a fourth uh, game play, which is against the AI automaton. Wow, okay. so. Um, the first sprint I've already shown you, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, sprints two and three. And so let's, let me take you through, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, yes. And uh, so let me take you through, uh, through that. I'm just going to uh, play uh, a real simple game here. And this is just demonstrating that I've got this uh, fourth gameplay um, mechanism up and running here. So World War I Flying Circus. And uh, let me just take you through, um, uh, take you through some of these. So I've got, this is the, uh, the AI algorithm that it's going to use. Now this forward one is what I'm just going to be demonstrating here. And it does nothing more than move the AI automaton forward one hexagon, basically moving it forward 200 meters. Random is there's 27 different maneuvers available to the, to each of the players. And um, this just randomizes up one of the 27 uh, maneuvers built in. I'm going to take you through that in more detail. On top was another one just to kind of, uh, as a precursor to the aggressive, on top will always try to get the automaton to wherever the human is now, 
the, this on top will be to, will be try to fly the automaton so that it's on top of the human, uh, or at least get as close as possible to where the human is now. Of course, the human may move, but this is the algorithm. Uh, and then Max is using uh, all the tricks, as it were. I'll explain that in great detail, of course, but it's, it's basically reading in that um, those calculated, pre-calculated uh, AI best moves. If, if the AI automaton is uh, heavily damaged, it will try to run away. So I've got another algorithm that basically uh, says, you know, no matter where the, this, this is the human biplane, I want to get my AI uh, biplane. I want to get as far away physically, so the greatest distance away from, from the human. So that's the, the runaway algorithm. So it's important for Max because if the Max uh, looks at the damage that's on the automaton, if it's less than a certain percentage, I've got some randomization kind of thrown in there. So it just doesn't always play the same way. It will try to run away. If not, it will, Max will again first use that AI best moves as I'm pre calculating as part of this and storing in an online database. And if it doesn't have that pre calculated um, uh, version in there, then it runs with the aggressive uh, algorithm, which again plays aggressively. And uh, you know, actually, <laughs> I mean, it's actually beaten me a few times, just the aggressive thing, even though I know exactly where the biplane is going. Um, it's kind of scary. Okay, so uh, so let's we're just going to do forward one or oh, the clear cache. Uh, so with this, um, I'm storing in a, a local permanent uh, storage on the on the mobile device. I'm storing the latest and greatest, the, the best information it has about all the different maneuvers available. Clear cache clears that out, and so it's a way to kind of reset uh, World War One Flying Circus without deleting it all and then and then. And then starting all over again. So clear cache will clear that internal local cache for the AI best maneuvers. And then to recalculate, uh, this is the tool that I needed to build. And then recalculate the, the AI best moves. I'll demonstrate the steps, but it really does five five different steps, uh, starting with um, uh, it, it, the, uh, it basically given all the different raw human maneuvers out there and the count of all the different maneuvers uh, given at, at the basic uh, five tuples, it will recalculate that best uh, maneuver for the AI machine. And then it'll write that back out to the database for Volvo and Flying Circus to automatically read in. Okay, Grant. So we're, right now we're just kind of demonstrating that, uh, that we can play a, a game against the AI automaton. So it's just another gameplay we're gonna play. Now, um, the F1 is just, it's just going to move forward. So I'm going to move forward too. You know, so we're just kind of getting, you know, slightly together. I'm going to slip in off right here. And then I'm just going to go up there. And you notice just the, the biplane, the automaton is just always uh, just doing one, going forward one thing at a time. And I'm taking my shots against it. And I can just stay right behind it here. And shoot the automaton out of the sky. So, nothing, you know, uh, from an AI point of view, nothing terribly grand, but it just demonstrated and just took quite a while just to integrate this into the gameplay. Now, I tell you that the, uh, I, at first I thought I would, I would use the, um, basically the network play as kind of the model for this, uh, but it turned out that it was a little bit easier to do this inside of uh, pass and play with some, you know, if statements to kind of make sure that uh, things are going on at the right times. Okay. So that's the um, just flying forward, and then uh, the other other thing then is um, I want to kind of demonstrate is that uh, when I package and ship World War One Flying Circus to the Play Stores, I want to have the latest and greatest version of the AI best calculated moves built into the code, so that for whatever reason, if I can't get connected to the um, you know to the Firestore database via the network uh, that at least will play a reasonable game that way. And uh, so I'm going to show that initial game value. So I've got these values, you know, in same place where I've got a lot of the other initial values that I use for the game. And, um, and then I, you know, I, I read them in or I've got them here. So I read it in here. In fact, if I, I just have one there so that this is where, as I build up more and more of these, I can then hard code those into there. So when World War One Flying Circus starts, it first looks to this value, it reads that in, and then it will look to the online database. 
uh, and looking for then the you know these pre-calculated AI best moves. If it finds them, it reads them in, updates uh, its you know, a, a, the internal memory version of it, but also writes it back out to that cache that I told you about. So that if the next time you start up, and if the network is down, it will use the latest and greatest that was cached from last time. And as soon as the network's back up again, it'll go back back out to the um, you know, the AI best moves. Look at the timestamp that's there. You know, the timestamp for the AI best moves is uh, newer than the timestamp that is when it last saved uh, the its best moves on the local um, device. Uh, then it'll go back out to the AI uh, best moves in Firestore, read that in, update the local, and then uh, we're back in business. And that's that cache. So that's how let's let's going to show you how this is all. Let's see, just working from a um, first out of the box, you know, you just bought it, you just bought World War One Flying Circus from the Play Store out of the box, what happened? So back to the game. Um, I want to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and just to take you through this too, this maneuver here um, is, basically this is the five tuple, including the, uh, this is the, you know, the, the facing, and then the, uh, the relative angle, this is the relative angle off the bow, and then this is the facing of the other uh, biplane relative to um, where this biplane is facing. So I can tell this is for the olive, um, oh, and this is the distance, that 600 is the distance. This is for olive greens, and this is the initial starting position that I have, both the biplanes where they're 600 meters apart and kind of facing each other at, a, at a, each one or 60 degree angle looking at each other inside of that. And this is the maneuver then I'm telling hard coding uh, into the World One Flying Circus to say, for olive green, go right one, forward one. So that's the maneuver that we're looking for, but only for that tuple, which is identified by that string there. Okay, so back to Unity, we're gonna play. And I need to clear the cache, because as I mentioned, you know, the, all the previous things that have gone on uh, would be stored in there. So just clear the cache, we're gonna do this um, uh, built in. So this built-in uh, only looks to the built-in version, the hard-coded values that come from the Play Store, as it were. So here we are going to play. And I'm just going to not move at all from, a, from my biplane, the human's biplane point of view. And you can see there's that R1, F1. So the, that biplane is kind of turning to the right one hex side and then moving forward the 200 meters. I'm just going to stay here. What I've got for that, um, for, that uh, for this setting is that if it cannot find something that is in that relative five tuple kind of positioning, it just does an F1. So the AI automaton will just then go F1 and it'll just fly on forever. So that's kind of a demonstration of, of that, uh, where it's using those hard-coded values and, and not updating um, uh, because there's nothing to be up, updated because it cleared that cache. Okay. So let me now take you over to the Firestore. And I've got to delete all the, the Firestore connect, um, collections that are there. And Firestore doesn't give you a really easy programmatic way of doing this. So I've got to do it the hard way here just by deleting this collection. So apologize for the uh, delay. The AI best uh, minute moves, that's the uh, that's these pre-calculated um, best moves um, uh, for the AI uh, automaton. The count, this is a count of all the different maneuver you know, based upon each tuple, the, the count of the number of times the humans have done any one of the 27 maneuvers. Delete that. And the raw information is just all the different, every individual move, you notice these are all the AIs, but every individual move that the humans have making and capturing a lot of information about that. This is what we're gonna be reading in and analyzing. Okay. So clear everything, the only thing left in here, the only collection is just the, uh, the users that are out there. Okay, so did that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to train um, this uh, this AI machine, and uh, so I'm going to clear the cache. Well, we're going to run here. So I'm going to train it, and um, 
and see how this, uh, this automaton learns. Um, so the, we're gonna do the max um, uh, AI algorithm. I'm gonna clear the cache. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play against the automaton. And I'm just gonna go always move forward one hex. And what we're doing is we're training you know, the, the machine that no matter what's going on, the human just loves to just keep going straight forward one. And this just makes it a lot easier for us to kind of see then the results of this training. So we're gonna move forward one. You notice the, uh, the biplane did the R1F1 as it was programmed to do as hard-coded by, um, by the initial values out of the Play Store. After this now, it's gonna use um, the, uh, the, the aggressive maneuver. And the aggressive maneuver always will try to get a shot on the biplane where it is now. And you notice it's kind of swung around. So if I would have been back here one hex, it would have gotten a shot at me. And then it always tries to uh, you know, kind of stay behind or get behind the, uh, the biplane. And there it is. I got some randomization in there, so it doesn't always do the same thing. And now it's getting some shots right there. And you notice it's not, you know, speeding up. It's just very comfortable being back there because it's it's always trying to, you know, get that shot uh, and it, you know, where I'm behind. So I'm behind one hex, but since I'm always going one forward, one hex. hex. Anyway, this is the AI aggressive algorithm that is playing out here. Okay, there it is. Shot me down. Now we've given you know, the, um, the machine, as it were, lots of raw information about, about how to play. Okay, so uh, with that, I'm going to go back over here. Let's take a look at Firestore. I'm going to refresh. And there's all the raw maneuvers uh, for, the, um, for the human that the human player has made. You can see here there's a lot of distance 400s back those two hexes. The human's always done this F1 maneuver. And uh, let's keep a track of the damage and all the different uh, available maneuvers by the human. So let's keep a track of all that raw information. Okay, grand. So now here uh, I've created a tool, and this tool will read through the in five different steps. We'll read through the um, all the different counts that exist already, the the, the the counts that are out there. Read in all the raw values, update the counts, write the counts back back, which is the fourth step in the the. Fourth step then is also write it back and then recalculate all the best maneuvers by the AI machine and then push that information back out so that World One Flying Circus can read it again. So uh, I've got to create a tool, but right now I'm, I'm using a lot of methods and a lot of information that's already in World One Flying Circus. So I've got to abstract that out into a separate tool because I don't want to ship the game with that. But right now it's integrated into the game, but I've got a button to take care of that. So I'm going to recalculate all that and just did those five steps there uh, uh, through the async processing or the, uh, the AI processing. I'm going to go back to see what it did here. We've got to refresh. You notice the, all the raw human maneuvers gone because after I've read them in, I delete them. So I'm not reading them again and again and again. Uh, and then this is the counts. These are all the unique. Uh, there's four, apparently four unique five tuple positions. And you can see the information that that is the the key there, the uh, the name of the document, um, and I can see I can see this with the zero in the way at the lower right of that uh, zero zero means they're both going in the same direction, and the four hundred means um, it's you know the four hundred uh, distance, four hundred meters distance, and then it's the number of times thirteen is the maneuver for F one, and uh, so here it re, you know learned that. Yeah, F5 or the, uh, there's five times that the human did F, F1 in this certain uh, tuple here. Okay, so it's learning, you know, it's learning about what the human is doing for those different relative positions. And then I'll take you through the, uh, the programming, but then uh, for those four different tuples, the, um, uh, I'm calculating what is the best maneuver to, given that the human likes to do this maneuver the best in that five tuple, how do we get the, you know, the AI automaton, the swing um, to get the shot? Uh, primarily, is the most important thing is to get the shot. Second is I don't want to get shot while I'm taking the shot. Third is 
the most next important, important thing is I want to, if I can't get the shot, at least I want to be tailing, or if I can get the shot, I'd rather be tailing than not tailing. And then the, uh, the last thing is the facing. If I can't get the shot, if I can't tail, then at least I want to point my biplane at the other biplane, which makes it more difficult to come at me and not get shot back. In other words, I'm pointing my pointy part of my biplane um, uh, at the other enemy biplane. So if it wants to attack, it's going to get bit with the sharp pointy part of my biplane, my, my guns. Uh, so that's the basically a, a mixture of the uh, of the maximum and the, and the aggressive algorithm. So things are working well here. So I've recalculated those uh, those moves. I I don't push that information back into the local cache uh, on the system uh, on this uh, version of World One Flying Circus. So I need to end it, fire it back up again. Reads all the stuff in. It's going to go out to the um, to the AI best maneuvers that are now updated, and then we're going to play now another maximum. Let's see how it behaves differently. So again, I'm just going to go F1, keep going forward, and notice now instead of just doing the R1, F1, it knows that the human loves to just go F1 from that relative position, and it's already got four, four damage on me. It's already jumped way ahead saying, I know where that human is going to be, not where it is now. I know where the human is going to be you know, at the end of this turn because it learned that. So if you just keep going F1, now from that relative position, we didn't have a tuple yet, so, but it just learned something, right? Uh, then here, it knows, remember, it was in that position, and now it knows it's going to be right behind me. But also, too, it didn't have that tuple of being right behind it because remember it was always trailing that two hexes behind and that was the first time the ai machine was you know that one hex behind the human and it went back to the ai aggressive which got a shot on where i was not where i was going but it's learning and here we are still teaching still teaching the machine And there it is. And notice it, it actually sped up and caught up to me because it had been there before. It knew where I was going to be at the end of the turn, not at the beginning of the turn. Okay, so that's it's learning a little bit more. It wasn't a great game by the machine, but it's learning a little bit more. So with that, then I want to recalculate. So I'll just go back here, uh, refresh. We got a lot of new raw information. We're going to read that raw information, update the count. We're going to re-examine the count and re and recalculate then these AI best moves. So let's the let's do that with the tool. Recalculate. So it's doing all that work over here. Go back to here. Refresh. Raw is gone. The count now has been updated with, you know, we used to have four. Now we've got what looks like to be seven unique uh, five tuples, and we'll have seven then unique five tuples uh, with an updated UTC date for the AI best moves. Grand. Okay. So back to here. Again, that doesn't get pushed into there until I start up World War I Flying Circus again. Okay, here we are. We want to do max. Automaton. Forward one. It's got that aggressive maneuver built in, or now, you know, now it learned it. This one, look at that, just swings behind, still gets another four damage. It didn't know about that one. So it's getting a little bit trying to figure things out, but then it learns again. Wow. So if I did it again, it would be in three turns, it would shoot down the human. And of course, unless the human did something different. So Wow, so that's that's the um, uh, the automaton um, learning uh, based upon the, the 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 moves that the humans making that you know in this relative position the humans will tend to say oh I'm going to be you know playing this way and as I get more and more information the automaton will play a better and better and better game. Okay, let me take you on to the last big scenario before kind of going through a code review. Um, I need to 
I stop this, I need to delete just the AI best moves here. All right, and so now the AI best moves have been uh, deleted. And this is just kind of a demonstration to show that uh, I'm indeed caching this information locally. Uh, so let me um, fire up the game. So there's, there isn't, you know, the, there is no online database of the AI best moves. So hopefully we've cached something, right? So just the max, I'm not gonna clear the cache because that would really defeat the whole purpose. And just to show that I can then play like I was playing before. And there it is playing nice and aggressive, playing nice and aggressive. And notice they're nice and aggressive. Look at that. And uh, yeah, you notice too, I didn't recalculate um, the AEA best move so that it took that four turns with, you know, to actually shoot me down rather than in the three turns. But if I would have recalculated it and then allowed this local device to be able to read the online version, then it would have been able to shoot me down in the three turns. So that's the last uh, use case that I had for that. So let's take a look at the, um, uh, the code to make this all possible. Uh, so here we are, mid values. Um, I, I did do, I use a lot of things in the maneuvers, like for here, this calculate end angle position uh, uses the encoding, you know, the F1, F2s, R1s, R3s uh, for calculating, uh, given the current position of an object in, um, in, in uh, Unity, where that object would be after that by uh, doing different transforms, uh, you know, moving position forwards and uh, rotating things to the left and rotating things to the right. So I use that repetitively as I'm going through the 27 different maneuvers, because now I know where the human likes to be at the end of that turn. And now I can repetitively go through all different 27 maneuvers and find the best way to get a shot on that human. So that's also a part of, you know, I'm reusing the same code in a lot of different places. So that's why it's still kind of integrated into there. I've got to split out this tool from the game itself, but it, it is integrated. All right, so like normal, I've done this uh, searching for the MS9. Um, and I did with that, skipped a bunch of stuff at the beginning here. So hold on, let me, there we go. So with this, it really is, I mean, a lot of it is just saving a ton of information so I can then analyze that information. And I don't even analyze all that information. For example, I've got the, um, you know, the other, the damage that's on the other biplane, because if, if the human is going to get to the point where it's got less damage or a lot of damage on it, uh, fewer hit points, it's probably going to be trying to run away. And so I want to start being smarter and smarter about some of the, um, you know, the nuances of the game, about when you want to be aggressive, when you want to be defensive, when you want to try to run away. Um, so I want to try to be better about those nuances. I'm gathering a lot of information, but I'm not using it yet. So that's still work in progress there. Uh, and then it really is, yeah, all about gathering all that information and then uh, being able to process and store that information. So it's just a lot of, you know, a, a lot of keeping track of things um, uh, programmatically. Okay, so when, oh, this is just that uh, difficulty level uh, thing. So it's nothing, this is throwaway code anyway, because you know, normally I'm just gonna ship with the AI um, algorithm max. And when I do that, when the, when the uh, human says, yeah, I wanna fight against this automaton, I basically asynchronously will pull in the, this best moves if available from the, um, uh, from the online Firestore database and merge them into the local moves dictionary. And if it's updated, then push that back out again. Um, that's the only exciting thing that I wanted to show you there. Okay, so then this is the uh, where, yeah, that make the best move. These are the different algorithms. Um, taking you through, you know, the F1, hey, that's an easy one. You know, the random uh, just, you know, it's a, creates a random integer between one and 27. That's an easy one. Uh, hard code is the one that just uses the, um, the tuple that is built into the, baked into the, uh, what would come out of the Play Store. So I've got some helper routines to uh, calculate the key. So this is creating that, uh, that uh, unique five tuple key. And then it's just basically looking up, you know, that five tuple key in the moves dictionary. And then it gives me my maneuver. And, uh, if, I, and if I can't find that maneuver, 
then we just hard code an F1. All right, easy enough. On top, I've got a, uh, a method for that, aggressive method, runaway method, and the max method, and I'll take you through those. So here's the on top. Um, yeah, probably not so exciting, but basically we're just kind of calculating the distance uh, between the two and, uh, and looping through all the different uh, maneuvers, right? Through one through uh, 27 maneuvers. And, uh, and then uh, knowing where the human is now, uh, I will then go into, I'll call that calc ending end angle position, the, the one that I showed you uh, for the different 27 maneuvers. So then I'll know where my AI biplane is distance wise, relative distance to where the human is now and not looking forward, but where the human is now at the start of the turn. And uh, if it's, you know, if it's there, then, um, well, no, I keep, I keep, you know, this is just a loop and I'm saying, Hey, if this distance is less than where I've been before, you know, that's a new, my new current uh, best maneuver so far. And then, yeah, we found one. So pretty simple algorithm again, kind of just to test out some of the logic. Uh, AI aggressive uh, is a, a, a little bit heavier logic, uh, but it, it's basically based upon the same kind of thing. So I want to get that first one working, but now here are the same thing. I'm looking through all 27 maneuvers. Uh, and then what I'm doing with the AI aggressive, it's still based upon where the human is now, not any knowledge about where the human likes to go in the future, but I'm calculating um, the where the for those 27 maneuvers where the uh, AI biplane is going to end up at the end of the turn. Of course, I don't know where the human is going to be. I then you know, see you know, based upon where I where the machines are at the end. I calculate the damage done against the human. I calculate the damage, and these are routines that are built into World War One Flying Circus. I calculate the damage that is um, would be against the automaton. Um, then calculate the distance between them, and I do some fa uh, facing calculations to see how far off the bow things are, and uh, and then to see if we're tailing. And then all that goes into this weighted score. You can see the values up here, and I mentioned this earlier that basically, you know, the, the from a weighting point of view, we love to get damage against the enemy biplane. Um, damage against us, we're not so concerned about, but you know, this would then, you know, if we if we have two different shots on the enemy biplane, if one of them is they get to shoot back and the other one is we get to shoot and they don't get to shoot back, we're going to pick that one. So it just, you know, it gives us a so we're not, you know, well, if we don't have to get shot, we don't want to get shot. Uh, then the next thing is the um, if the AI automaton is tailing the enemy, like in, in World War One flying circus tailing is really important, it really gives you a tremendous advantage because it's forcing the other player to tell you whether they're going left, straight or right. So tailing is important. So I've got that. And then ultimately in the end, if I can't get a shot at it and if I can't tail it, at least I want to again, point the sharp, um, sharper part of my uh, biplane at the enemy and then have it harder for them to, to be able to uh, bite me without me biting back. Okay. So that's the algorithm. And then basically we're just kind of keeping track of all that and then uh, log things out, um, yeah, uh, finish up, log things out and return the, uh, the values. So that's the AI aggressive. Like I said, that's using the, um, used in the AI max. Runaway um, implementation, I, I mentioned this earlier, it's pretty simple. Again, just uh, taking a look at the distance and uh, we would just want to maximize that distance rather than the on top which was minimizing the difference. So that was pretty simple. And then this is the AI max implementation. It actually turns out to be, again, from a CPU point of view, it'd be relatively um, quick. The, the uh, aggressive implementation is, uh, it's gonna be a lot of, a uh, lot of mathematics. Um, each one of these uh, routines is quite costly in terms of, you know, sines and cosines and dot products and all sorts of, you know, it, you know distance calculations, as you know, the, you know, the difference uh, squared and then square root. So they're, they're quite um, costly in terms of CPU. But the, uh, the max uh, implementation is, if the pre-calculated values are there, it really is just a dictionary lookup. So I've got a helper routine to, to fill out the move structure to basically calculate the five tuple. 
and then I build up that five tuple and in uh, a string builder, and then it's just, uh, like I said, a dictionary call. And if I if I look if I'm lucky and I get the dictionary call, bada bing, bada bang, that is my maneuver string, and I just basically a little bit more logic and I pass that back. But if it's not uh, there, then I do call the AI aggressive, right? So I step back to kind of the heavy duty maths for, for that. Wow, okay. And then um, AI best move structure. So this is a, kind of a helper routine. I am, uh, if I'm playing a game, uh, no matter, well, if I'm playing a game as a human, every time the human makes a move, I want to create up that, that tuple of information, including you know, what type of uh, game it is, what type of you know, gameplay. So that's that raw information, the human maneuver, raw information. But also too, if I'm, the a if I'm playing the AI and I'm the AI automaton, uh, I also call this and I get less information from it, but it basically is a helper routine to allow me to gather up, package up the information about this maneuver uh, for that five tuple. And so I can build up a, a structure that's got all that information in it, or at least the minimum amount of information that I need. Um, you know, uh, if it's, you know, if it's for human maneuvers, I've got some additional information for that raw data. But if it is indeed, you know, for the AI, for the AI uh, calculating, what is the, you know, what is the five tuples so I can look up in that dictionary, if there's less information uh, for that. Okay. Uh, another helper routine, calculate the angle off this bow using the dot products. And um, yeah, uh, you know, um, AI lost contact search. So basically, it's it's just uh, saying, uh, given um, I've got some values for how damaged should the AI machine be before it tries to, you know, in the lost contact situation, whether it tries to flee or search, and I just use that, and then the you know the opposite of it, the not in terms of. Um, in the AI, whether it should try to flee uh, while it's actually flying. So if it gets, right now it's, it's um, I've got it at 25%. Uh, so if the biplane is down to 25%, and then I've got the, the plus or minus, um, which is right now five. So basically between 20% and 30%, if the biplane is in that range, uh, and you know I randomize up a number, it will it'll try to run away. I'll try to use that. Um, you know, the algorithm to just get as far away as possible. And it's a little random. So, you know, it will try to run a bit, maybe it'll come back and, and uh, be more aggressive. So it's a little, um, little random there. I, I'm trying to add more and more randomness into this so it's not always behaving the same way. All right, so there's, uh, you know, that. And so these are some of these things I already had created uh, as part of the, uh, this is the, you know, pulling out of the best, you know, the local device. So this is that information where as I was, writing these five tuples, I was also um, uh, pushing them to the local device. Okay, so then we get into the, uh, remember I, I, I said before we had three different sprints, you know, saving that unique five tuple uh, with the human maneuver uh, with that. The second is um, you know, the, the processing the five different steps for reading all that raw information and then calculating the AI um, the best AI values so that I'm going to be taking you through those five steps. And the third then is just simply having the automaton use the pre-calculated values. So these are the five steps that uh, when you, this is the tool, right? So this is the five steps that when you click on the, hey, recalculate, these are the five steps that are happening in sequence. So let me take you through those. Uh, so a lot of it is working with uh, Fire, um, you know, the, the Firestore um, cloud database, as you might imagine. So we got some dependencies just to make sure we're connected to Firebase. I'm uh, zeroing out the, I store all this in, in uh, this structure here. It's in a, you know, two different arrays, storing all that information in there. Um, and right now I'm zeroing it out and I don't know if I need to, but uh, I'm doing it just, just to be kind of careful. So here's the query into, um, into Firestore. And uh, so we're getting a dictionary back out again. And basically, we're just you know, into that structure there. We're just reading to say, you know, each new key, which is the, the document ID that's in Firestore, uh, for each new key, um, that's the key. And then the actual value is what we get. And there are 27 of them. So I'm looping through the document that we get 
um, from the Firestore database. I'm looping through all, all those, and if I just show you, it's probably a little bit easier to, is to see is that I've got a field name, and the field name is nothing more than you know, a number, and you can see there's one through 27. And I'm just reading that in, and the value is going to be, you know, the current count. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm just reading in uh, where I was at the end of the last time I did this. So I'm reading in all those 27 and putting those into, in a, in a, you know, this is um, how many of those I have, and then this is this T int. So I'm just, you know, this T int is up to 27 fields. So I'm reading in, so I'm, I'm just reading back in the human maneuvers count that I had written out uh, last time that I ran through here. So now I've got that information in memory and we call async2, right? So this this pull human maneuvers raw. And now we're gonna read in the raw human maneuvers. So we do that, we're reading in through because the, the individual World War One Flying Circus games on people, all people's devices have been writing out to that uh, raw human maneuvers raw collection. We're going to read in all that information and uh, parse it, put it into uh, keep, keep track of all of it into this uh, structure. Uh, this just a single version of that, and then we save that into there's a you know a list of it, and it's just we're, we're just pushing in that single value to there and keeping track of those. So we're just reading in all that raw information, and then um, now we're we got all that raw information in, and now we're going to loop through. Um, all the raw information that we've gathered, and we're updating that new key. If there's a if there's a new new key there, or, or updating the uh, the new array uh, with one, but if it already exists, then we're just incrementing, you know, incrementing that value there. Uh, so you know, good old fashioned full loop with with that, and a while loop. So uh, so as we're, so we've read in the old counts, we've read in all the raw uh, values, and now we have a list of all the different, so for those unique five tuples, for the 27 different maneuvers that are available to the humans, we've just added one to you know, all the different 27s for that tuple. And so we're building up now this master view of for those human maneuvers, what is the, the aggregated count for the most popular, or for all of the 27 different maneuvers in each one of those uh, uh, five tuple positions. All right, so now we get that information in memory and we're going to write it out right away. So we're basically going to write it back out to human maneuvers count. And there it is. That's that, you know, the, the value, the key, or the, the field name. And then this is the, the value, the number that's actually being written back out there again. So we're just writing the information back out again so that when we're here in the future, step one, we'll be able to read this back in again so we don't lose where we are. Okay, this is the one that does the magic. And uh, so this is uh, step number four. So now we, um, we're gonna use that, um, all the information about all that count information, and we're gonna calculate these best maneuvers. And it's, um, it's you know, anyway, it's good old, uh, good old fashioned, uh, um, a little bit of mathematics here. So basically we're looping through all the different, um, all the different uh, um, human, uh, human maneuver counts, so all the different tuples that we know about, and then 27 different counts, and we're going to look for the one count that has the uh, the greatest, um, um, you know, it's going to be the most popular count. So I had originally in my, um, in this sprint, I had originally, I wanted to do the top three, because I, again, I don't want the human, I don't, I don't want the AI automaton to always do the same thing. I want to have some, you know, not only randomness, but also I wanted to have the top three. And then, for example, if this happens two thirds of the time and, and a little bit less than one third of the time and maybe 3% of the time, you know, then I can randomly choose which one to go and, you know, this one would be done most often, but this one will be done sometimes, this one would be done rarely. I wanted to have that kind of variability in there. I'm not quite there yet, so that's something I need to add. Uh, those, by the way, tough enough to kind of get this working. But anyway, that's my goal. But right now I'm just finding the one that is the most popular. And that's the one I'm going to assume that the human is going to make that maneuver the most often and then find the best way to get behind it. So speaking of that, so now we know what this, you know, the human maneuver uh, most likely is. That's that index there. So um, 
I'm going to then use that uh, helper routine and I'm going to come up with the, the tuple associated with that cumin maneuver. And then um, in Unity, the, the best way to, uh, to do to calculations about where things are going to be in a three dimensional space, I found this very early on, um, is to move objects around the three dimensional space, not try to do the mathematics about where you would be in three dimensional space. So what I do is I've got a couple of um, uh, just bogus, not bogus, but empty objects that really aren't there other than they, you know, they exist in the space. Uh, and I call one of them the automaton B, which of course is the, um, uh, which is the AI robot. And then the other is human A. So for the automaton, remember I mentioned earlier um, as part of the, the, the Mark Foley algorithm, uh, the, the basic premise is uh, that here's this. Uh, this is going to be maybe a little bit small, but the basic premise is is that the you know the AI, the the computer, is always in the galactic center, right? So it's always in the center of the universe, center of the galaxy. It's always facing you know say north, and then what we're doing is we're just we, the all the information about this is the relative position of this in terms of distance. Uh, the angle off of the, the computer's bow, and then the facing difference from this. So if they're both facing in the same way, that angle is going to be zero, like, in, but it's drawn here. That uh, facing angle is going to be 180 because it's 180 degrees relative to the galactic center. That's the, the goal here. So what we're doing is we're putting the automaton right here in the galactic center. This is pointing north uh, in the galactic center. Grand. Okay. Now the human... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put the human in the exact same spot, same galactic center, same angle. So they're both on top of each other, both facing the same way. And um, then I'm going to drive, because now we, we, we know, right? Uh, we know what the human is going to do because of, um, uh, because what we're doing is we're not, we don't know it yet. We're looping through 27 times through all the different, um, all the different maneuvers that are out there. And we're going to, for each one of those, move the human in a in in that location in that location so we're going to i'm sorry not 27 times we're just going to do it um a one time you know we, we know where the human is going to go so we're moving that human there so here's that uh we put the human in that galactic center uh we rotate them um based upon the the angle off the bow or the, the distance right the angle off the bow and then we move them that distance um, you know, so that their angle off the bow, then it's going to be that distance of, you know, if it's, um, you know, 200 or 400 or 600 meters or whatever the distance is. And then we need to, um, I, I, what I do is I just simplify that. I think I, I think I could do the math a little bit better here. I basically move the, um, the, the human biplane back. Um, so it's back pointing in the same direction. And then I go to the, this is the other facing. So it's how far off of the relative facing of the computer. So the zero degrees up to 180 degrees. So I would then rotate the human there. So now that we've, we've done that, now we, we basically calculate that ending position of that human um, using another, another helper routine that's in the, in the maneuver. So now we know where that human is going to be at the end of, that, uh, of their maneuver. So we know, so we, this first part here was calculating where the human starts. Since we know where the human likes to go, Right? That's that most popular index that we grab. Now we're calculating where that human is going to be at the end of that turn. And then we're going to use the, the AI aggressive algorithm to attack that position. Now remember the AI aggressive algorithm always attacked based upon where the human is. And guess what? We have already calculated where the human is. So the AI aggressive algorithm is going to go through all 27 maneuvers and find that best way to either get a shot on it, not being shot, using that, that weighted uh, heuristic for the maneuver. And so we get then out of there, we'll get the single best move, and then we save that information. So then we're building up then this information that's going to be eventually written back out as the AI best moves. Wow, so there we are. So that's the mathematics for 
for this. Uh, obviously, um, these algorithms can be improved, uh, but they've already worked pretty well in terms of uh, learning and, and doing what they're going to be doing. And I can always, again, tweak things. I'm saving a lot of information about each turn, and I'm, not, I'm only using about half of that information. Um, like I said, I've already wanted to wait if it's humans flying against humans on the network and where if you die, um, you, know, you lose everything because this is World War One flying circus. Those humans, I think, will be, you know, uh, maybe aggressive at times, but they'll be, you know, they'll play a little bit differently than if they're just playing passively against a buddy, and they'll play differently against the um, AI automaton. Uh, also, I want to start capturing information about, you, you saw, you know, the damage, but also, too, how many kills this human has, because if you've got a double ace, yeah, I, that, their maneuvers, I want to wait more than if you've got a, a noob, a beer boy. So, I've got a lot of tweaking to do a lot of the things I can do to improve this algorithm, but the mechanics is there. So just continuing on with this, um, this is that helper routine just for parsing. So I'm getting that, you know, no matter what the move is, the current um, the move key, I'm able to then you know, parse that information, uh, get it broken up into its constituent parts. And then just, uh, that's it. That's just the other stuff. I mean, I Created, did create a, um, I've got a, if I'm running in Unity, I've got access to the keyboard. And so I created some uh, hot keys, uh, some numbered things to be able to evoke the individual uh, of those five steps as part of uh, sprint number two. But um, that's largely all that went into this last sprint milestone number nine. Well, maybe it's time for me to take a breath. And then continue my plea is, wow, really would love to hear your cards and letters on this. Uh, it was a lot. And if I had more time, which unfortunately I didn't, I did want to, and I'm going to have to do this for the, um, it, my goal for this was to actually put together a, a, a PowerPoint presentation and get things down on paper, because I know I'm going to do this as part of, um, of talking about the game. <coughs> Excuse me. And, but, so it's a little bit uh, confusing because it had a lot of moving parts and believe me, you know, the, the coding and programming of it was a little bit confusing, but it really helped me. What I really learned with this is to break things up into the small little elemental parts. And I really did a very, I'd say more careful kind of programming where, like I said, I've got those, I had those three big sprints and I created the first sprint, which was just saving the data. I created the third sprint, which was nothing more than uh, reading, you know, basically that, um, you know, some of those couple of hard coded values so that I hand created uh, some of the, uh, the AI best moves, I hand created them so I could, you know, I could see that working. And then the, the middle part was that you know, all the work today to actually play the game in the, or the, of the sprint, actually play the game and then doing the, the five steps. And again, it was confusing enough to see all those different things, um, what needed to be done. So I, you know, I sat down and created those five steps on paper, and then obviously created them from a programmatic point of view. And then we factored it about 50 times just because you know, what you originally think is not the right order and things like that. But um, yeah, it was just, it, that was the, probably the biggest thing and that I've, I've known this of course for many years, been programming since the seventies, but it's just taking something that's complex, breaking it down, as I did accomplish you know, a, a particular step or a task, I tested, tested, tested to kind of make sure the boundary conditions. So that was you know, relatively solid and I was able to extend and expand onto that and grow things that way. Uh, and by having done Firestore in the, the first sprint of, of this milestone, uh, milestone number seven, having done Firestore there, um, being able to write to the database, you know, there was a lot of quirks with Firestore and I was able to I had problems with Firestore. Again, not problems with Firestore. I had problems with my implementation trying to use Firestore, but I was able to you know, know that, ooh, that's a quirk. And I kept you know, trying different things until finally I found the right uh, formula that worked. So breaking things up into bite-sized pieces, getting those bite-sized pieces solid, and then moving on to the next bite-sized piece. And it was uh, one of those incredible moments where I, you know, I work. I basically programmed for about two weeks straight on this, 
And in the end, I had all those bite-sized pieces. And as you saw, it really was just you know, adding things together, like you know, the distance calculations and all the facing calculations and, and uh, whether it's tailing or not, these are all helper routines that I've written uh, in the past and putting all those five steps together and just basically reading things in, writing things back out again, all those things, I had all the bits and pieces done uh, and tested, and then I just put them all together. And I will tell you, Professor Perry, it worked. And it was like, wow. And that's when I knew my AI automaton you know, became conscious and uh, it's time to start taking over world domination. So uh, it, um, oh, anyways, I, yeah, uh, I'm rambling and I will get, let you get back to, uh, back to your business and your business is challenging you to say, hey, Brian, you know, that's crazy. Or if you can do this this way, or you remember you need to do that, or uh, I'd like to see this, this, and this to actually improve things. I mean, I, I do want to hear all that constructive criticism. I think it's a good first pass. It can always be improved. And I want to hear from you. I want your fingerprints all over that about how to make this uh, even better so that uh, I, want, I want children to cry. I want them to cry when they're playing against the AI automaton. I want them to weep that this machine is smarter than I am. Um, that's my goal. So anyway, with that, thank you and uh, have a great day.